What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Spotlight Show. We haven't had one in a while. Um, we've been trying to do this one for a, a long time already. And hopefully by the time you guys see it, the Spider-Man trailer doesn't come out, which is supposedly supposed to happen tonight. Um, the latest tomorrow morning. This could be due to, even though it only seems um, right that they will release it to, today on in their Sony comic, not Comic Con, is it some sort of Cinema conference Con. like that? Cinema Con. So we might get that tonight. But um, Spider Man and the third installment to this trilogy that we've witnessed for the past few years and we've enjoyed um but this one seems to me a little bit different if you've watched our prior shows i'm pretty sure we've mentioned our concerns um brian tell me first of all a few couple of things tell me one if we, do you agree we're going to get this trailer tonight and could you possibly give us a short version of some of the concerns that we may have or you have and I'll concur or add on to it? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a big list. I think as far as the trailer goes, yes. I mean, I think all signs point to this. We, we had speculated on the reasons for delay. I do think the fluidity of theaters and the COVID situation has had an impact on why we are less than four months away from the supposed release date and we haven't yeah. seen a single bit of footage yet i think a key focus of the trailer honestly will be is there a date at the end of it yeah or is it simply going to be a coming that is soon key, or, yes you know so i think that will be something that people really are watching for i think obviously with the leak that occurred yesterday you know, it's not ideal. I mean, I've yeah. actually deliberately not watched it. Yeah, um, me neither. I don't want to see it that way. Uh, and it's unfortunate if that's forcing the studio's hand. But as you say, CinemaCon is a, it's a good forum. You know, we don't do everything at, at, at Comic-Con anymore. A lot of the studios have gone their own way. So this would seem to be an appropriate forum. And, you know, to be honest, this movie sells itself. Uh, you know, you, you don't really need to build brand. You don't need to build awareness. You just yeah. have to say... Spider-Man and he's back and people are generally ready to yeah, show this post trailer. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I would, I am hopeful that they take a little bit more honestly of the Eternals approach, which is show less because you don't need to show more. Uh, and that includes a lot of these rumors that were, I think we're going to get into on this show. I will be very disappointed if any of those is confirmed in this trailer or officially, that would to me be a waste. Um, mm -hmm. you know, even if they, even if people generally know they're coming, why detract from the visual impact yeah, 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 of yeah, seeing yeah, it for yeah. the first time? So yeah. at any rate, uh, th that's kind of where we are on the trailer. You know, as far as the concerns, I guess I'll start with a summary statement and then we can go down the list. Okay. I think that, that when we talk about concerns, we talk about excitement, we talk about, it really boils, that boils down to one simple question for me, which is what is this movie supposed to accomplish? Is it more the culmination of the Tom Holland trilogy that started with Spider-Man Homecoming? Or is it more the gateway into the broader Spider-Verse as it connects to the Marvel multiverse? I think those are two totally different movies. And you know, given that it's Marvel, you, you know that they have usually found a way to service that balance of giving you something self-contained versus connecting you to something more. But I think with this particular movie, how much of each of those things you get really connects to almost all of the questions we've had about this film and how they're going to approach it. So I guess I'm gonna throw it back to you, then we'll get down into the concerns list. What do you think this movie will be from that standpoint and what do you think it should be from that standpoint 
Well, based on the numbers and the confirmation that I've gotten, and I don't know if I had, I think we confirmed Charlie Cox a long time ago. Yep. We didn't confirm on the show. We didn't confirm that uh, Maguire and Garfield were going to be in it. But I had confirmation that they're in the film. This was like probably like a month and a half. You don't have to believe me, but Brian is my witness because I told him as soon as I found out. Um, so based on all that rumor, all that confirmation uh, from, from my point of view, we are going to be dealing with some of the leftovers of the last film in terms of what we got in the end credit scene. And uh, beginning, and I want to say beginning, I'll choose my word very carefully, I'm beginning of the Spider-Verse with Andrew Garfield and Tommy Maguire. I have ru- I've heard rumor, I, I forgot I was watching on YouTube and they mentioned this and it seems possible that they've been shooting two films, part one and part two. In the beginning, before that rumor came out, I was a bit concerned about this movie being too much too soon and I felt that was going to be a big mess why these big events have sort of a backstory that we've witnessed and they've explained and has happened throughout um, various movies and to me Although it worked for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It worked there, right? I don't know how much more... They can probably be unique in terms of how they do it, in terms of introducing the multi, uh, the Spider-Verse into, you know, having the different Spider-Mans in there. But I just don't see... Or, or didn't see how this would work. Despite having, let's count them down. Alpha Molina, Jamie Foxx, uh, Willem Dafoe, Kirsten Dunst. Um, who else? Toby, obviously, and Andrew. All these characters showing up, it just felt like too much. So I felt like that was the movie that we were going to get. What it should have been, for me, you don't resolve what happened in the second film in just 10 or 20 minutes. And I feel like it's still going to be a cheesy way in terms of getting Peter off the hook. Um, I thought we were going to spend more time there and possibly build towards the beginning of a multiverse and not being introduced in this film. So. That was my concern. Now with that rumor, it, 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 it makes sense. If it does go that route, Brian, what do you think? Okay, so we agree on this. When we started hearing rumors of these appearances, some of which became confirmed, there have been little nuggets I felt like in Molina's commentary in particular, which have indicated that these, at least some of these parts are not 30 second cameos. I think if you were intending to have some fun, go down memory lane, but ultimately not really use these actors to make a real impact other than to just remind fans of the movie history of this character, you could limit them to cameos, squeeze them all into a couple of scenes in the movie and the movie probably would not be too jumbled. But I think for a lot of the audience, it might feel like a missed opportunity. You got all these guys and women to agree to come back. I mean, they're, they're all pretty talented. Why not, why not leverage that in some, in some way? But that, that is, as I said, if this was really meant to be more self-contained, 
I think that's what we'd be looking at. I don't think that's what we're looking at. So then it goes to your question, which is how much is too much? I think we're in an era where we become conditioned to using the end credits and the mid credits as a way to introduce the next have, thing. Yes. No doubt question. So I almost feel like a movie like this with this many players on the board, you can't just do that either. I think you, if you were to just do that, it would almost feel a little too formulaic now. If that's mm -hmm. the only place we see, like if, if, if um, McGuire and Garfield only appeared with Tom Holland in a post credit sequence, it'd be cool to get people buzzing. But I, I think we're kind of beyond that being enough. And that yeah. goes back to, okay, so if they're going to be in the movie, they're going to be in the movie, scenes, lines, they're going to be in the movie. How much can they be in the movie before this movie gets hijacked and becomes something Else. that is like another version of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 3, which was bogged down by its own weight and its own complexity yeah. after a brilliant, you know, first two films. Yeah. Later on to that, there's the subplots here of this movie almost didn't happen, right? So the deal between Marvel and Sony mm -hmm. fell apart. It is structured differently than the other two, which I think matters. So the first two, Kevin Feige and Marvel were given some production and creative control, but they, and, they, and in return for that, they got 5% of the revenues. Okay. But Sony put up the money for the film. And then Tom Holland was allowed to go back and forth and make appearances in the MCU. Disney became concerned that Kevin Feige was too stretched and Sony's ambitions for the Spider-Verse, this is a report, that their ambitions for the broader Spider-Verse were too big. So they felt that Kevin Feige's time would be pulled too much to Sony. And obviously Sony doesn't pay his salary. Yeah. But Disney demanded 25 to 50% of No Way Home's finances, which is where the, where, and, so, and Sony walked. Yeah. The rumor is they settled kind of at the low end of that. So Disney, mm -hmm. for the first time, is putting up dollars behind this movie. Supposedly, they're providing a quarter of the film's budget in exchange for a quarter of the film's profits. Profits, not revenues. Profits. So this movie has to make money for Disney's investment to, to work. And in exchange, Tom Holland is again allowed to go back and forth between the MCU and... And, the, and this film, but with no assurance that there are movies beyond this either. So it's been intimated by Kevin Feige that this is the beginning of a new partnership, but this is the only deal where we have this right. So I just put all that gobbledygook and stats out there so people understand the backdrop of this film coming to life is yeah. different than the first two, even though the characters and the director and the right, all of that's the same. It's a lot. It's a lot to sort of weigh in on the different situations that exist in this deal and the back and forth on the worst circumstances and all these other things that may come up with regards to Kevin Feige's time, money, what product is more important to Disney. So having said that, it's almost almost feels like, an, uh, I'm my concern is that this is not gonna be so. This is gonna be a Spider-Man three, what we got with, uh, but a better version of that, which is not saying much. But I think that the financial backdrop of this, to me, makes it feel more like a new Spider-Man one, a bigger okay. Spider-Man one. That I just, when I hear Disney for the first time writing checks, they've got a bigger hand in it. And Sony's saying, okay, we'll give you that, but we want this to be the launching pad for Sinister Six and a launching pad for, that's our vested interest. 
that to me feels like the compromise of, okay, this is now more like a gateway than it is Return of the Jedi to the last two movies. That yeah. That's the feel I have of that. Which, to your point, would say you, in theory, have time. You don't need to fire every bullet with all of these characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Movie. Yeah. And that's the concern that it's just going to be too many things going on at the same time. How do you resolve it? How do you resolve it that makes sense? How do you resolve it that is believable sort of um, and acceptable, satisfying? That's going to be tough. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna call it just to I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this just to say it just in case it does happen so you can be like, damn, you were right. If they resolve this issue of Peter Parker being Spider Man with Tobey Maguire, or with either Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield swinging around while Peter's amongst other people, so they could say, you see, I'm not Spider Man. That's gonna be a problem for me, Brian. That's going to be a problem for me. So having said that all these confirmations, you know, Willem Dafoe answering, uh, 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 he answered this question or a question regarding Spider-Man, this Spider-Man, um, fantastic. He said, I feel the need to talk about movies when these movies are going to come out. <laughs> you know, so he basically said nothing. He's like, yo, ask me when the movie's, about to come out or you know when there's some confirmation not for me you're not going to get it from me pretty much so let me let me ask you mm -hmm. take on this so we've actually been pretty lucky in terms of we have not had a bad spider-man on no on so that is rare like yes. batman been all of the map. Superman, we've talked about many times. It is rare that you have a character that's been played three different times. And the consensus is it's been played well three yeah. different times. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So that means that there's, and Tommy Wire doesn't act much anymore. So, quite honestly, it's kind of a, kind of a deal when he comes Wait, out of poker. his poker, comes out of his <laughs> poker room to, uh, to show up on screen. Um, thoughts on how you would use the two of them to complement Tom Holland and not upstage Tom Holland, because it still has to be Tom Holland, Spider-Man in the end. It, for this to really be a grand slam, I think it still has to be his Spider-Man version that carries the day. So how, how do you use two pretty powerful presences with a lot of nostalgia behind them in, in a way that supports that? That's difficult to say because I just feel that the roles have to be sort of defined. And those roles for Toby and and Andrew to have their moments, but to also play, you know, that they're trying to help him. And in helping him, whatever worlds they come from is also saved. The hero has to be, in my opinion, Tom Holland with them to appear as them helping him and them dudes again they'll have their moments but they can't be the mvp of that film i think that's right i think it's in how you use the powers in how you allocate the script yeah Alan has to get the best stuff for this to work if you start giving the sidekicks all the best lines then then this you know this, this could yeah. go away. They don't want it to go. Um, presumably, though, both of their entire universes exist intact. I'm assuming that's how we're going to get them into the movie. The villains, it's interesting. Much more uneven, I would say. You know, Spider-Man, we all liked the three Spider-Men. I don't think we all liked all these villains at the time. Oh, no. Right? So... Alfred Molina, we we're like, all right, he's he's in the pantheon of villain yeah. performances in a comic book movie. Jamie Foxx and Willem Dafoe are not. <laughs> By any for two guys who have either won an Oscar or been nominated for an Oscar, neither of these guys is putting this role on their epitaph.
you'll have many people say that Willem Dafoe's performance was a great performance as uh, the Green Goblin. He was, he, he's always good. He wasn't particularly great. And I don't know if he will play him the same. These characters can't be these humorous, joking, saying these one. They can't do that. Not in this MCU. If they do result, result to going back to how they played with these one liners and all this other stuff, it, it's not going to play well. So I think we'll get a different performance out of those characters. That, that's the hope. At least that's the hope on my on my end. So that I think is going to be John Watts. One of his bigger challenges is that in the case of Maguire and Garfield, you are asking them to basically just pick up where they left off. Very comfortable. Yeah. Like putting on a putting on a suit that's been great to you for 10 years, right? Yeah, yeah. With these other guys, you definitely need to slide things around a bit, right? Jamie Foxx in particular didn't look good, didn't sound good. The whole thing was written poor. He's even admitted it. He's promised that it looks better this time. You have to do some rehabilitation on how Electro was presented, I think, for people to really buy in. I was not in the camp that Defoe was great in the first one. I thought Goblin was a little over the top campy. I didn't think the effects were that great at the time mm -hmm. for the, mm -hmm. the glider and him in the costume. Yeah. Uh, so I actually, and I think it was made worse by the fact that when Molina popped up a couple of years later, you're like, oh, well, this is how it's supposed to be done. And then it kind of maybe made Defoe look a little bit less by comparison. So I think that's a challenge. We haven't talked about, I mean, I guess, is Michael Keaton in this too, maybe? Is Vulture maybe popping up in this? Do we know? Or is he being Possibly. saved? I mean, he's out there. He's been teased as being, he was at the end of the second one, right? So, yeah. or is it the end of, yeah, end of the second one, or the end of the first one. I can't remember, but he's he's been- He was at the end of the already. first one. He was at the end, end of the, the first, first one. one. He's in jail, but the, yeah. So that's, I don't I haven't seen much on that, but he's floating around out there was a pretty good villain. Um, so I don't know, like, how would you organize this? You know, how would you give a pecking order? Would you try to balance these villains out? I think in these first iterations, like with Jamie Foxx and Willem Dafoe, I think they're going to come in a bit more humble okay. in realizing that we got to play this. We got to act. We can't do our thing. You know what I'm saying? So I think they're going to take more direction this time and perform in the way these guys behind the Marvel brand. And I'm sure Sony wants this to be a success as well. They got to listen to what these guys want and deliver that performance. So how, I mean, you, again, this is that, that problem. Like you got so much, how do you put these, all these guys in the room and make it make sense that they're all in this room? You know, I, I think actually Michael Keaton coincidentally nailed it when he was actually talking about joining the flash movie to play Batman. He made a comment, which I thought was interesting, where in the one hand, he said, basically, I haven't seen any of these movies for, you know, 30 some odd years. Yeah. He said, but I thought about my portrayal of the character. And he he admitted, he said, basically, I always felt like if I could get another crack at it, I could really do it. I think that's the right answer for all mm -hmm. these guys, which is, I don't care if you're a fan of the genre or not. If you live this part, whether you were happy with it or not, what you hope is that you're, you're older, wiser, and have actually spent some time thinking about the performance. And you're like, if you had a chance to do it again, what would you make better? And hopefully yeah. that's kind of gotten into the room and that's what we get. But I just, the, I struggle with movies like this. It is tough to have ensemble against ensemble. You yeah. have to choose leads and you have to create Okay, you're the number two, you're the number three. So Tom Holland has to be the number one. We know that on the, on sort of the hero side. There has to be a number one, I think, on the villain side. And I, mm -hmm. I just, I look at this list and I'm like, based on performance, you would say Molina, but if Sony's trying to organize a Sinister Six, 
there's sort of broader ramifications to who you choose to be the main villain of this movie because i'm assuming that would then become the leader quasi leader of the sinister sticks in the future so yeah i think that's a very tricky question i don't think the trailer is going to answer that and i'm fascinated to see how this was written to set up a foil because honestly at the end of far from home the main villain when we left things jk simmons Jay Jonah James, that, that was the main villain, right? I'm gonna expose this guy to the world. Now we know the character can't be the main villain, but yeah, that's man. how they left the story. So you can't yeah. crowd him out either, totally. That storyline has to be a major part of this movie. Yeah, I think with J. Jonah Jameson, he's certainly the one to begin sort of the downfall of peter parker right he was he's the main he's a villain because of that he's a villain to peter peter parker so that certainly has to play out but although i think his role will, will remain similar um to what it has been and being that that dude but you're right i i don't it'll be difficult to who's the lead right Who who's gonna be the guy that we're gonna be we're gonna say that this guy was a great villain It'll be very interesting how they do this. And again, this now, goes Tom, back to, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Tom Holland also, as we haven't even talked about, he has other backup in this movie because Benedict Cumberbatch is in this movie. Charlie Cox is in this movie, right? And you're making the eyes get big because you're like, and we, I think our suspicion is that Cumberbatch has taken over the Robert Downey Jr. Role. Kind of Tony Stark yes, yes, yes. role, which you know, he was probably in the movie for what ten minutes in Homecoming. Yeah, he kind of had some cool scenes. He wasn't really that that impactful, but in this case, it's a little bit more interesting because we know Doc Strange two is coming, and the multiverse is coming, and this movie is touching on the multiverse. So we know that if Cumberbatch is in here, he's in here to deploy his magic in some way. And so, again, how would you use Doctor Strange in a way that is? supportive of this character in this movie and doesn't kind of just purely make it into all right this is just a bridge to get to doc strange 2 and into the into the multiverse as a whole a lot it's a lot um but what are your thoughts on the possibility of them having uh or the rumor that they're shooting two films here a part one and a part two. And how do you feel about that? Um, you know, it definitely could be true. I think, it, you know, it's hard to read in, in, in COVID environment, production schedules have been so much slower, delayed, uneven, that they've been going at this long enough that they could have. It's not impossible that they could have yeah. enough material already yeah. to do that. Look, I, I, I'm with you. I, I would rather see not cameos, but I would rather see McGuire and Garfield have a smaller role with speaking parts, but smaller role in this one. I would mm -hmm. rather some of the villains have a smaller role and feel like we are not rushing from Spider-Man and Peter Parker outed as murderer, which is where we were, yeah. to into the Spider-Verse you know, in, in live action, That's, which is some version of, I mean, I know we're not re remaking the animated, but that's kind of like where we're going to, I don't want to feel rushed. I don't want to feel rushed between those two things. And, 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 and so to me, give me more Tom Holland, give me more Zendaya, you know, give me more of JK Simmons, quite honestly, and go a little bit smaller on the other guys, yeah. but, but don't relegate them to credit scenes. Like use them, use them in the third act, use them in the second act, use them like to build naturally to where like when you exit this movie, hopefully Spider-Man has been exonerated or we're in a new place, but we're genuinely excited to see mm. all these old actors and actresses have their roles expanded in Spider-Man 4. That, I mean, Brian, if I was a theater and you're telling me to do this, I'd be like, you're asking for a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah you're asking a lot of me my friend 
Like, how, how do you expect me to do this and, and, and for all these things to be satisfied in a way that you're, you're going to go away walking like this was one of the best movies or one of the best Spider-Man movies? And uh, it's, it, for me, it, it's a difficult thing if this just falls into one movie. Better, obviously, if a second film has, has, is being done on the low and we get an announcement for, for part two, it, it'll def certainly be um, much more welcome than this being resolved in one film. Yeah, it's, I, Well, this is the test. I mean, in, in theory, if this movie comes out in December, this is the first true multiversal movie. Black Widow's yeah. not self-contained movie. Shang-Chi, maybe it touches on it, but that's a, that's a new character intro. That's not a predominantly multiversal movie. Eternals, yeah. same idea. Like I'm sure, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but like that'll connect to everything. But it's yeah. another introductory origin type movie. It's not, you know, hey, let's jump into Earth here and Earth there and Earth everywhere. So Spider-Man No Way Home is that movie in theory. The first movie to showcase how Marvel thinks about the multiverse for its movie properties. We just experienced it in TV with Loki, but this will be the first time we see it with sort of the, the Avengers character or, you know, Sinister Six or what have you. So it's a big test. You do not want to come out of the gate with like, you know, 65% Rotten Tomatoes, B plus Sinister. Nah. Like you don't want to roll with that. Like you don't make money no matter what you do, but you don't want to roll with that. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't want to be in the list of like with Suicide Squad. It, it made all this money, but it was whack. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You don't want to be. You don't want to be put in that. Imagine being put in the same um, list as a billion dollar movie Transformers that was horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't want that. So. They got a tall order. Uh, let's see, man. But it's, we're going to be getting a trailer real soon, to possibly today uh, or tonight or, or, or by the latest tomorrow morning. Yeah. Can I ask um, you one other question, which is sure. we know, as we said, we know that Sony is pushing hard to get their Spider-Verse up and running. Venom 2 coming. Morbius, which we got into that. Way, way to go by the director, apparently, supposedly spoiled tom hardy's appearance in morbius in a quote it's like <laughs> rookie like he hasn't been doing this long enough but um but yeah so obviously they want to get that going my, my question to you is and I, I framed this to you before which is these and um aaron taylor johnson is craven right that casting news is official yeah uh and jared leto obviously is morbius I don't understand the Sinister Six. And I guess one of the things I'm hoping to find in this movie is a little more of a clue as to where we're actually headed with that. Do you th actually think Defoe, Molina, and Fox are in the Sony Spider-Verse for an extended period? Or are they just in this as a multiversal character for Marvel and it's they're going to be handing those roles off to younger actors for the full-fledged Sinister Six. Yeah, because if these individuals, Doc Ock, are people from other dimensions or realities, at the end of this, or so when this multiverse thing, thing is resolved, do these characters do, do not exist yet or Will be into. I mean, that's that's a good question. That's a good question. I mean, that would be very interesting to to reveal to us that that is a possibility. I'll be down for that. I'll be down because I just don't see Jimmy Fox doing this for. I mean, he's Electro, so who really cares? But like Doc Ock and 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 um, what's this guy's name? One I mean, of the foes guys. That's Hos my point. Yeah, yeah, but this is my point. Like at the age they are, they don't have a decade plus worth of Sinister Six Spider Verse films in them. I don't think. Yeah. So does so? I mean, what is Sony's plan? I mean, like Hardy clearly can do it. Leto can clearly do it. 
Aaron Taylor Johnson, they're from a, you know, these guys are 30, 40 years younger than the other guys. It's yeah. just a weird mix to me that I, at the moment I can't wrap my head around as like a franchise building team. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, so I, that's, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of at a loss and I'm hoping this, this movie yeah. starts to point me to, oh, okay. It, it, we're living in the past a little bit to have fun with Spider-Man, but there's going to be another Goblin or another Doc Ock and another Electro that they intend to use in, in future Sinister Six. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, a lot of questions. A lot of things to be concerned about. Will we... I don't know if we'll get that satisfaction... Listen, a lot of people have been wanting this movie. You know, people have been excited. All they've been talking about is Spider-Man. Uh, it set it off with Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, and now people want to see a live-action movie. Will Sony and Marvel give you that? How much of Marvel's influence is on this film to be fantastic? I don't know. If it fails, what happens? Fair. I don't think it'd be fair to the into the Spider-Verse animated film, which was great. And they're obviously making yeah. a sequel and Miles Morales is the focal point of that story. I don't yeah. think it would be fair to basically re reconstitute that in live action form. I think that would be distracting. That would be too yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think one of the goals of this movie is to make its multiverse distinct. Yes, yes, yes. Multiverse. Like if I see Tobey Maguire dressed as Spider-Man Noir, I'm out. I'm just saying <laughs> that right. <now. laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, again, we got to just wait and see. Hopefully, we get some uh, some good stuff from the trailer. And what do you think, Brian? Last question before we wrap this up: If this movie fails, what, what happens is fail? next? What is fail, fail doesn't make a lot of money at the box office and people don't like it. Let's say, let's say five, this is supposed to be a billion dollar film. I don't care what you say. If it doesn't get to, if it doesn't get to 800 million is a failure to me, yeah. a billion, a billion. When you're talking about the, all these rumors and all the hype about these other individuals coming into this film, everybody's been talking about it and this is going to happen a billion better. If it doesn't get to that feet, failure and people don't like it. What happens then? It's a great question. You know, Spider-Man 3, the Sam Raimi version was, was a commercial success. Uh, any way you cut it, uh, it had a huge opening weekend. But to your point, people didn't really like the movie. So the fall off was much more severe. But it ultimately made a lot of money. It was one of the highest grossing movies of 2007. Yeah. I, you know, pandemic will obviously dictate some of the outcome here if this does get released in December. But even allowing for that, you, you know, you would logically expect this to be the biggest domestic box movie of the year if theaters are generally open and people are generally comfortable enough to go. So I agree with you. I think, I think if this is, you know, I think if like sort of the critical score is average to slightly to anywhere around below average to slightly above average. I think that would be a massive disappointment. Um, I think if our audience score is in the B's, I think that's a massive disappointment. Yeah. Um, Let me rephrase. Because we're in the pandemic, it is, it's almost impossible to get to a billion. But if people don't like it, then continue. Well, as a quick tangent, because Sony, but oh, sorry, Disney gave us updated Black Widow streaming numbers. We have a reference. Mm -hmm. So I won't give you all the math. Basically, if you take the Disney Plus numbers plus what Black Widow's actually made at the theater and you kind of make it the same as if it was all theatrical, Black Widow's about 600 million. And Fast F9 is about 700 million. So wow. you do have those reference points. Spider-Man mm -hmm. 3 ought to be able to beat to both beat of those that. numbers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe it's not a billion, but I'm just saying, we've had two movies get to those levels. This movie ought to be able to it, beat it, it, both it, those no numbers. With no problem. Yeah. So if it doesn't, 
Um, Tom Holland's contract is up. We have not received any official word that he's re-upped. I think the odds still favor he's brought back for another go around. I don't think he's aged out of the character just yet. Um, so I think he survives, whether this works or not. We know that Tobey Maguire didn't survive. That was his last Spider-Man in 07. I don't, I don't see that happening this time, even if the movie is a little bit of a disappointment. Yeah. I think the casualty and the rethink is probably more the Sinister Six extended Sony verse. That's the one, as I said, which I'm having a tougher time going in. If this movie is not successful, does the blame fall on some of those characters as like, well, they just cluttered things up and people didn't really gravitate toward the updated take that Fox, Defoe, you know, even Molina like had. And as a result, does Sony need to go back to the drawing board to get Sinister Six going? I think that's the risk. It's going to happen, but I think the method by which Sinister Six happens and the excitement we have for it is directly connected to how this movie does. Yeah. Let's see, man. Let's see. I'll throw one other nugget because John Watts has become a point man for Marvel in this new generation. Remember, he's yes. got Fantastic Four. Which is a huge order. So I'm just going to float. If this movie bombs for some reason or is somehow reviled, I don't anticipate it, but let's say that happens. Could he be very quietly ushered off of that assignment? I think that's not impossible either. Yeah. A lot of things can change with this movie. There's so much at stake with this movie is incredible. Um, Let's see if they can deliver once again, man. I mean, we've doubted them and they keep on, you know, uh, keeping us wrong in terms of what they can deliver, how, how, how good a quality it can be. Uh, obviously, we still haven't seen Saint chi yet because we had our doubts about that, but uh, um, supposedly it's incredible. So, and obviously we didn't have any doubts about Eternals, which we'll talk about very soon. Um, I asked you this on we we talked about this on the the Shang Chi concern meter. So I want I want to get your official number here. So I'm going to say, my opinion, Spider Man Two is still the best Spider Man movie we've had. I don't think this new trilogy has quite gotten to that level. I still think the 04 Spider Man Two is the best. Oh yeah, Spider Man Two. Oh, yeah. So okay, so I'm going to go with you can you can. What is your scale of one to ten what is your odds like your number that this movie is in that class or better and then what is your number like concern level that this movie just kind of is a mess and loses its way so two numbers there is that a one out of ten or so yeah, so 10 would be, you are absolutely convinced this will be the best Spider-Man movie we've ever seen. Oh, okay. And 10 on the concern meter would be, you're absolutely convinced it's a train wreck waiting to happen. I'm at a six on train wreck. I'm at a okay. three in terms of it being the best. I think I have the same numbers as you. I think I have the <laughs> same number. I think I'm right about the middle of the scale for concern. And I think I have even less conviction that this movie will be truly transcendent. I'm kind of holding my breath that it's at least very good. I don't know if that's how we should feel about a Spider-Man movie, but I think that's where we are. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to find someone who isn't excited about this and, and wants to see this and wants to see Toby. I don't know if there's a lot of people that have the same concerns as we do, um, but this certainly offers a different perspective from the, the, the point of view of fans who can't wait to see this. You know, well, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't but wait in to see sense, it. it. But yeah. in the sense that they feel like this is going to be fantastic. 
it's like they're yeah, going I, in, I, yeah, I agree. you know, it's like there's no concerns, you know, but it's like me telling you about a steakhouse. Oh, go to the steakhouse. The steak is delicious. You never seen it. You never tasted it. You know, you hear all these things that I'm telling you about it. And when you go, you can't wait to eat it because I, I hyped it up so much. And then when you eat it, it's like, yeah, it's okay. You know, it was okay. It wasn't what I expected it to be. And I feel like people are going in with that expectation that this movie is going to be amazing, you know, because they want it so much, you know, you know what I'm saying? You want it so much. And then when you get it, it's like, I, that's what I'm afraid of. It'd be like, yeah. everybody's going to be like, ah, right, whatever. It was, you know, I don't think that you're going to get all oh, it. Just okay. Isn't acceptable to me. Not with this film, yeah. not with this character, and we're not the, all the characters that they have in it, which is a concern. If they do it over two movies, we might have something fantastic here. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Like, I think back to the Civil War, and I, I had no concerns. Like, even though we knew it, we knew this cover storyline from the comics, we knew the number of heroes and sort of, I guess, opposition, but still heroes that would be involved in this film. It was all exciting. I think coming off a of Winter Soldier for me, just going into We saw that together, I remember. And uh, I, I it is not the same feeling with this film and i yeah. think there's definitely that sense of this could be really cool but it could also be really bad too and yeah. it, marvel doesn't do really bad so i give them the benefit of the doubt but you know i also know that sony's at work here and sony has done some some bad in the past so yeah, yeah I, I mean i think my fingers are crossed but i think my expectations are going to stay pretty tempered for this yeah. one versus I would say, you know, we could we'll, we could talk about things like Eternals. My expectations are, despite not having seen an Eternals movie before, my expectations yeah. are off the charts for that movie. Yeah, yeah we got to talk about that. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, that was our show for the Spider-Man Spotlight. Um, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all these concerns that we've talked about. Um, do you have any concerns? Do you agree with some of the concerns, but you don't care? <laughs> let us know in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time on the Just Spotlight.